What's up guys, it's Colin. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about different types of wood for your terrarium. So the first type of wood we have is called cork, or this is called cork bark. So what this is, this is actually uh, the bark of a cork tree. They're native to Western Europe. So they're primarily grown, the cork trees are primarily grown in uh, Spain, but also I believe now that there's a lot of cork tree plantations in Brazil, um, in South America. So this is a sustainable resource. So what this actually is, is the outermost skin of the cork tree. This is harvested, I believe it can be sustainably harvested, I believe it's every seven to eight years is when you can get a crop of it. It can be found both in tubes, and in sheet form. This is a really great product. One nice thing about this is it's extremely lightweight. So as far as attaching to surfaces in your terrariums or molding different things in your terrarium, this could be a really good option. And because of its lightweight, um, it's easily supported by silicone products or spray foams. One thing about this product as well is that because it is so lightweight, it's also very um, fibrous. So it is prone to degrade um, a little bit faster than some other materials, like some other hardwoods. So if this is exposed to excessively high humidity for long periods of time, you're gonna notice the overall profile uh, of the cork is gonna degrade a lot more quickly. You're gonna lose some of this texture and things like that. Another downside of cork, would be that because it is so porous, you can see all these nooks and crannies and crevices. If you do get like a buildup of feces or urates in the cork bark, it can be kind of difficult to clean off. So that can be one disadvantage. For most people, I would say that um, for tropical enclosures, cork bark makes an excellent addition. And in our pre-made terrariums, we use it very frequently. Not only as a background, you know, these can be made into planters and things that hold tillandsias and bromeliads and things like that. So they're really versatile as far as uh, using in your terrarium. So that for that reason, um, cork bark makes a great addition. So the next type of wood um, we commonly recommend for terrariums would be our what's called Mopani wood. So what Mopani is, this is actually an Asian hardwood. It's basically a super dense and heavy driftwood. The thing I like about Mopani is, number one, if you get it uh, in an aquarium situation, it sinks. But the secondary thing is, because of its density, this stuff would take years and years and years to wear down in a terrarium setting. Even if it's exposed to really high levels of humidity, this stuff is great. I like this stuff too, because if you're adding it to a paludarium setting, because this uh, hardwood is so rich in tannins, it really adds a lot of those beneficial characteristics to your overall water profile in your uh, paludarium. So Mopani in general, I like for that reason. As well, because the wood is so dense, it's actually very easy to clean. So if you get urates or anything like that on there, it's really easy to just take a nice, uh, you know, a cheap toothbrush or a scrubbing brush and scrub that off um, with some water. Super easy to clean. And for that reason, I like Mopani wood. So our next type of wood we commonly recommend for uh, terrariums and paludariums um, is going to be our mangrove root. So this of course is roots from a mangrove tree. Mangrove trees you'll know are those trees that typically grow in brackish marshes and coastal areas. This is a sustainably harvested product that's produced by Zoomed. So the, uh, the mangrove root here, the thing I like about this stuff is number one, um, if you're adding it to an aquarium setting or a setting where it's partially underwater, this is very resistant to any sort of degradation or uh, things like that. The other thing is this won't affect your water quality or your pH or your tannin profile. So this is not gonna make your water that iced tea color like Mopani wood might make it. So because of this product's uh, the natural shape, um, it's really easy to style in, the, in, its, uh, in this orientation. I mean, even on the packaging you can see the Talawa uh, mangrove root. Um, it's really cool if you wanna have like a semi-aquatic paludarium, just because it'll look like the fish are actually swimming through the root structure. So that can be a really neat thing as well. And I like the fact that it's a mix of different sizes. So not only do we have a thick base, but we also have these very thin, long, fibrous roots. It can also be really interesting, in my opinion, if you wanna style it vertically. This can give like, um, the impression of like some scrub or some rocky out, outcrops, especially if you're going for more of like an Australian like desert type of um, setting. This could be a really interesting type of wood, especially if you have very small or border geckos and stuff, just for like to create that dry scrub brush look. So the next type of wood we offer in our store um, is what's called spider wood. There's several different um, origins for this type of product, but most commonly, I believe it is a, it's a type of azalea root structure. This product, again, just like the mangrove root, I love it because it has a very low tannin profile. So this stuff is highly suited for aquariums and semi-aquatic environments as well. Although, uh, like in general, it do, it's very thin and stringy. It doesn't offer like a huge amount of climbing support. This stuff is super solid. You bend on it, 
pull on it, things like that. It's really solid. So if it's in your animal's enclosure, as long as it's secured properly, it's going to be super solid its whole life. One thing I like about this product as well is because of its density, it's very, you know, not prone to wearing down and things like that, like cork bark can. So if this gets poop or urates on it, or it gets, you know, scratched up, things like that, it's going to last for the life of your terrarium pretty well, unless you go to restyle it. This product as well, it is pretty good about uh, staying submerged once it does get sufficiently waterlogged. Yeah, so that's spiderwood.